Some people talk about SEO as if it's all about rankings. Now, I love a ranking report as much as anybody, but SEO isn't really about rankings, it's about traffic. And to measure traffic, we need to use Google Analytics, as in GA4. But when you think about it, it's actually not just about traffic either. It's about conversions, it's about impact at the bottom of the funnel. It's about visitors taking action and the conversion rate from, from search traffic. For that, again, we need to use Google Analytics because that's not just where your traffic data is, that's where your conversion data is. So making the case today that GA4 is a critical tool for SEO reporting. My name is Andy Crestedina. I'm from Orbit Media Studios. We're a digital agency here focused on websites and website optimization. I'm gonna walk through with you now a series of GA4 reports that I always use, that I, everyone should use, I think, uh, to measure the performance of search optimization. Uh, bunch of different stuff. This, re this will show you exactly where to click. Uh, should be lots of fun. Let's jump in. Okay. At a very high level, I'm just gonna start with the top line, and yes, let's look at traffic from search. Just going to go to acquisition, <clears throat> traffic acquisition, and this is the search traffic right there. I'm on a date range. I'm gonna to just toggle to show the date range comparison, click apply, zoom in a little for you, and there it is. The change in search traffic over one date range to another. That's a very useful report to show the general overall efforts of search, uh, but it's limited. It's not that useful because there's all kinds of stuff wrapped up in that one number. It's literally the aggregate of every URL on this website, and there might be all kinds of pages that rank for all kinds of phrases, some for high intent phrases, some for low intent phrases. So let's go immediately to report two, where we're gonna track the performance in search for each URL. So for that, I'm going to come in here and go to the engagement section and click on the landing page report, because I'm really just looking for people that started their visit on this, and I need to create a filter to only show people that came from search. At click to add filter, dimension. My favorite way to do this, probably the simplest way, is just to use session medium. And then for the match type, I'm gonna say exactly matches, and organic is right there, it's a checkbox. Click apply. I'm still in the date range comparison. So now you can see the change in search traffic per URL in this date range. And look at the, the volatility. Some are way up, some are way down. All kinds of stuff in here, very, very useful. So that's a way to see search traffic per landing page, which is much more useful, much more practical. Because now you can go make decisions about what to do with that URL. Do you care about it? Is it a high stakes page? Are those very qualified visitors? What's the intent of the key phrases that brought the person to that page? So I'm gonna say a much more useful report but I'm gonna go even farther down now, more toward the bottom of the funnel, and take a look at the performance of, uh, you, of traffic from search and its ability to convert visitors into leads. I wanna look at the conversion rate. So for that, I'm gonna go back into the traffic acquisition report. And it's got all kinds of different metrics in here. The first column is the dimensions. The, these other columns are the metrics. Now, I'm checking a rate, so I'm not really worried as much about the date range comparison. You can try for yourself, but conversion rates don't change and engagement rates and bounce rates don't change that much over time. So it's probably less important in this context to use a date range comparison. Uh, but I do wanna see that metric. And if it's not here, we're gonna to have to click this pencil to customize. I do this all the time. I'm customizing almost every report I look at to see just the metrics I like. Click on, uh, and you can see it by the way, I've got the charts turned off at the top. I don't love the bar chart and line chart. My perspective, choose your own adventure. I'm gonna come down here and I've already got them set up, but this is where you would choose which metrics appear, as in which columns in the data, in the data view down here, uh, show up on your report. So for example, if I wanted to add bounce rate, I would just click down here to add a metric, start typing, click to add bounce rate. If I care a lot about that one, I'd put it up at the top. I really don't, so I'll remove it. So here's how I like to look at it. Users and sessions, that's top line traffic. Engagement, engagement time, that's kind of middle of funnel. Are these people happy? What are they doing? Conversion rate and conversions, raw conversions. So those are the ones I've got. Click apply, click save, save, save. You gotta click save three times. I've actually already got it here, but let's go back and look at it in this view. So now I've got a uh, just the ones that I want in organic traffic. If I scroll over here to the right, I can see the conversion rate the relative conversion rate for all of your sources of traffic. Now this report would be much more meaningful if we drilled down to, into a specific type of conversion. For example, visitors who became a lead. So from this drop down again, all I need to do is to choose 
contact form lead submissions, for example, in our account it's called contact underscore lead, it might be called something different for you, it depends on how your GA4 was set up. Uh, that's an event that was marked as a conversion event. So now I can see the conversion rate from visitors who came from search and became a lead. Whoa, that's an extremely low number. What's wrong with that number? Well, it's diluted by the fact that a lot of the visitors to this domain are actually just reading blog posts and that this number includes the total users, everybody who was uh, there to read a blog post or maybe needed our services. So the next way that I can make this report much more useful is to exclude the visitors who just had information intent. In other words, to take out of this data set the people who were just there to read a blog post, right? So to do that, I'm gonna create a filter to show just when the landing page wasn't a blog post. Here's how we do that. So I'm gonna click on add filter. Over here on the right, I'm going to choose landing page just by searching for it, there it is. The match type is, I wanna find landing pages that did not include, right? Do not contain, does not contain the word blog. So if the URL that they landed on doesn't contain the word blog, then they landed on a, the home page, or the about page, or a service page. That visitor presumably has much higher intent. So now when I look at that conversion rate, ah, looks much healthier. You get the idea. So that's a way to turn uh, this traffic acquisition report into a way to see the general likelihood that visitors who land on a different section, blog posts for newsletter subscribers or on non-blog posts, maybe for conversion, uh, for lead generation, uh, and to see that at that level. But the next level down, again, I'm gonna keep going deeper because all the best insights in GA4 are much deeper than you, than you might expect, um, is to see the conversion rate per landing page. Yes, I can do again the landing page report and check the conversion rate for visitors from search to each landing page. So for that, I'm gonna come in here to the engagement section again, go to the landing page report, and I'm gonna add that filter to just see people who, uh, let's take uh, blog readers for example. I'm gonna add a filter to just show people who landed on a blog post. Same exact filter, landing page query string. In this case, I wanna see the ones that contain the word blog. So these are people that just started on a blog post. And I only want to see people who came from search. So I'm gonna add a new condition. This condition is going to be again for session medium when it exactly matches organic. All the way down there at the bottom, click apply. Now, this is just the people who came from search and just the people who landed on blog posts and the likelihood that they turned into, what, what goal do we want? Let's do newsletter subscribers. Now again, our newsletter, our, the names of our conversion events might be different from yours, uh, but I can see that some people who came to the website uh, to read a blog post and landed on certain articles are far more likely to subscribe to the newsletter than others. Many of these literally have a 0% conversion rate. Wow, I could choose a longer date range and kind of get a better sense for that, but in the end, yeah, that's probably the case. Visitors who land on certain articles are far more likely to convert into subscribers. Those are the articles that need all the SEO love you can give them because a visitor to those is worth much more to your brand and to your marketing and to your outcomes than visitors who land on a website where they never convert. Let's do that again, but look at just the people who become leads. So I'm gonna change the, go the session conversion rate to show leads, and I'm gonna change my filter to show people maybe who do not land on a blog post. Landing page does not contain blog, and the session medium exactly matches organic. Here we go. Wow, visitors who start on, a, on the home page, visitors who start on this, this uh, service page, you know, some certain visitors who land on certain pages are far more likely to convert into leads. Wow, this gives me a strong idea for which pages to prioritize, where to focus my SEO efforts, uh, which URLs are worth 10x or 100x to my brand and my ability to generate leads than other URLs. Makes a huge difference. It's a really good idea to track the you know, traffic to specific landing pages, conversion rates. You can see how I'm doing SEO really in its ability to impact the very bottom of the funnel, like MQLs and marketing qualified leads. I'm, I, SEO is not just about rankings, as I said. <clears throat> okay, let's keep going. The last way that we'll use Google Analytics as an SEO tool is to create a notification so that we'll be alerted if search traffic drops. Here's how to do it. I go to the report section, which starts at the report snapshot, which shows a bunch of cards in here. It's all kinds of different cards. Uh, this card is called Insights, and if we click to view all insights, first we click on the Create button, then I'm going to click Create New under Start From Scratch. And let's just make a weekly check to show 
just when search traffic. I'm going to change the segment to show. Uh, again, medium. Um, it's going to offer first user medium. I'll take that. Uh, when the first user medium exactly matches organic. Very good. Click apply. And for example, let's just do like page views. When page views has a de percent decrease of more than 25% over the previous week. And I'm going to call this search traffic tanks. And I'm going to uh, have that uh, notify me um, uh, via email. So those are ways that you can use GA4 to do good SEO. Uh, honestly, I don't know how to do SEO without analytics. Uh, all the SEO tools are for the most part giving you pre-click data, data of search performance, rankings, uh, you know, like Google Search Console shows you like average position and click-through rate. But what happened after they clicked? It's possible to have high rankings and to slowly go out of business <laughs> as a brand for not driving leads. Or it's possible to have rankings and traffic, but not see a bottom line impact where you're filling your sales pipeline. So uh, again, this is Andy from Orbit. Hope it was helpful. Uh, if you know someone who's doing SEO, but not paying attention to the more impactful metrics, feel free to share. Uh, we'd appreciate it. Uh, and again, uh, in, the, in the description of this video, wherever you're finding it, there's a link to an article that goes through everything in a very detailed step-by-step -step way. Very good. Thank you. See you next time.